Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on ecological succession. What we'll discuss today is how communities replace other communities to make an ecosystem more stable and more diverse. So let's get started. All right, ecological succession is the replacement of one kind of community in an ecosystem. And this can happen in one of two ways. First, we can start off with primary succession. And primary succession usually begins with a pioneer species that lives on bare rock. And over time, this bare rock and this, these pioneer species will be replaced and the area will end up becoming what's called a climax community. Now, when this climax community is established, sometimes things happen where the ecosystem is then disrupted. That's when we have secondary succession. Secondary succession starts after an ecosystem experiences an interruption or a disaster. And over time, that area will repair itself and become a climax community again. So let's take a look at how these two processes differ and how they work. We're going to start off with primary succession here. If you take a look at the phrase primary succession, and if you take a look at the two words that make up this phrase, and if you know the definitions of them, you can probably figure out what's going on. Primary means first. And when we take a look at the word succession, you may have heard the word successors, like this coach will be the successor of the coach that retired. Or you might hear the term succeed used as the presidential nominee will succeed the current sitting president. When you take a look at the context of those two words in those sentences, successor or succeed means to replace or be a replacement for. So succession is replacement, okay? So this is the first series of replacements that's going to happen in an area. And primary succession is called primary succession because primary succession occurs when an ecosystem is developed from bare rock. So it's starting out from nothing. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take a look at the island of Hawaii, specifically Maui, and we're gonna take a look at the, some of the evidence of succession starting there. Now, a very, very long time ago, a volcano on Maui called Haleakala erupted. And along the south shore of the island of Maui, this lava ran down into the ocean, hardened, cooled, and solidified, creating rock. And as a result, over time, this rock is broken up, and here we have a black volcanic rocky beach. That's one way bare rock can be exposed, because that's the first thing that needs to happen. However, rock can also be exposed when glaciers, which are massive sheets of slow-moving ice, move and bulldoze soil away and leave exposed the underlying bedrock. So essentially, these glaciers will actually, as they slowly move across the land, push dirt into big piles like a bulldozer does on a construction site. And this happens in a lot of areas because not every place has volcanoes for eruption. So once we have that bare rock exposed, you might be thinking, well, how does life start from bare rock? There's nothing nutritious about bare rock. Well, nature always finds a way, and it finds its way by using organisms called pioneer organisms or pioneer species, as we alluded to earlier. What will happen is this. The first organisms to inhabit an area for succession are typically plants, such as moss, and lichen. So in this picture here, we have lichen growing on rock. Now, lichen can grow on bare rock and survive here because lichen is a combination of two organisms, fungus and algae. The algae is what gives the lichen its green color, and it photosynthesizes the sun to produce food for the fungus. The fungus grows on the rock. Now, the reason why the lichen can live here is because, one, the algae provides food for it so the fungus doesn't have to get food from the rock, but also what happens is the lichen will actually secrete enzymes that help break down the rock so it can absorb the minerals that its cells can use to produce other things. This lichen here can exist on this rock and live pretty happily on the rock. Now, this is the first part of succession because what's going to happen is that over time this rock is going to get broken down into smaller fragments which is important for building soil because you need sediments in the soil but also the lichen like all living things will die over time and when they die over time the lichen will decompose and they'll create what's called hummus the brown stuff in soil not the stuff that you dip your pita chips and vegetables in but when you take a look at a handful of soil the brown dirt that's in your hand that's the hummus and that has the most nutrients so soil begins to form because the lichen will break down the rock as well as the weather and other elements in the environment. And then when the lichen die, they'll decompose, making the soil fertile. And as the soil bed begins to build up, other plants can start to grow as seeds get passed on through wind, uh, running water, possibly animals flying over the area or passing through the area. 
And because that happens, succession starts to really take off. So once the soil is produced, various plants can grow. So now we've gone from an area with the lichen on it and a little bit further away from this area that has the lichen, you now have these low-lying shrubs starting to grow. And as these guys start to grow, they will die, decompose, add to the soil bed, also maybe attract animals, and animals will leave wastes behind that decompose, or perhaps animals die in the area, and they will contribute nutrients to the soil bed. The soil begins to get thicker and more nutrient-rich. As this happens, again, various animals inhabit the area, and depending on the plants available. Over time, these low-lying shrubs will be replaced by taller shrubs, and then these taller shrubs will be replaced by trees, and those trees will be replaced by taller trees, and all these different groups of organisms will begin replacing one another until we reach a climax community. And that's what we have here. Somewhere else on the island, this is what has developed on Maui. So as you can see, there's a ton of different life here from different types of trees and plants. And rest assured, there's different types of animals and insects and other organisms living within this forest. So when we reach a climax community, the climax community shows or symbolizes the end of succession when the ecosystem is at its most stable and has the most biodiversity, which means it has the most variety of life. So many things living there. And that's primary succession. We go from bare rock to a fully developed forest. Now, as we said earlier, sometimes these forests can be disturbed, such as volcanic eruptions happening on Hawaii. So let's take a look at some of those things. Once we have a forest or a climax community established, we can have some interruptions, as I said. And that's when secondary succession occurs. So secondary, it means second, and succession means replacement. So this will be the second sequence of events that will have organisms replace each other. And during secondary succession, this occurs when an ecosystem has been disturbed or catastrophically changed, causing succession to begin again. So it happens for a second time, hence the name secondary succession. Catastrophic changes can include wildfires that burn down a forest and all the plants in them. Okay, it can also include volcanic eruptions like you see in Mount St. Helens here. As the volcano blew its top, you had all this pyroclastic ash and material slide down the mountain, as well as lava and mud. And as it slid down the mountain, it bulldozed and covered a lot of this forest at the base of the volcano, located here in the background. So as that got knocked over and covered in, in rock and solidified volcanic rock, succession had to begin again. Or we can have man-made disturbances such as construction or deforestation when we physically go in and disrupt an ecosystem. So let's take a look at how secondary succession occurs. Now, secondary succession is a little bit different because we don't start off from bare rock. We start off from a previously existing ecosystem, as we see here. Now, this is a pine tree forest uh, found in Estonia, and it suffered a wildfire. So if you take a look at year one, uh, as you can see, these trees have had their charred marks on them. So this is evidence that a wildfire came through. Now, as you can tell, after year one, this photographer who came back for a series of 10 years and taken photos of this area from the same exact spot shows us that in year two, we start to have plants to grow back. And the plants start to grow back here in the background and in the foreground. And in year three, they get taller and different types of plants start to grow. And then year four, we have other plants still growing. And then as we go through the years, plants start to replace other plants or succeeding other plants in the area. And seven years later, as you can see, we have a nice development of brush and shrubs starting to grow here. Now, the reason why this succession occurs without lichen and pioneer organisms is because in the soil, there are already seeds here. And there are plants in this area that are adapted to having their seeds survive the fire. Some plants need fires in order to release their seeds into the ground. These seeds get buried in the soil, and as everything is burned down, the seeds in the soil stay intact. And as a result, as things get burned down, these plants can now grow because there's not a lot of foliage in the upper parts of the for forest, so the sunlight can get down. And as a result, they can photosynthesize, grow and develop and mature. And 10 years after the forest fire, this is what the forest looks like now. So when you take a look at the forest after the first year, when the forest fire happened to year 10, which is this picture here, you can see there's a lot of development growing. These woody plants are starting to grow taller. We have trees starting to re-sprout again. Here's a pine tree. So now we're having this replacement of plants 
and other communities moving into the area. With more plants come back the animals and different types of species that interact together. And again, we start to increase biodiversity and create a more stable environment until this forest becomes a climax community. So that's what secondary succession is. Let's take a quick look at what succession in New York looks like. When you take the regents or take regents practice questions, if you ever, ever get a diagram that looks like this, where you have rock on the left and a big, huge forest on the right, it's probably a succession question. Okay, so usually the diagram reads like this. On the left, you start off with bare rock. So that's primary succession. And then as you move to the right, you see the development and the replacement of organisms. So you have your lichens move in, and then they get replaced by mostly mosses, and then eventually the mosses will get replaced by the grasses and the weeds. And then you have herbaceous plants where you have flowers, soft-stemmed organisms, and plant-like organisms move into the area. Then these soft-stemmed organisms get replaced by woody stemmed organisms like bushes and shrubs. And then these shrubs get replaced by small trees. And then our small trees get replaced by taller trees. And then our these trees then get replaced by sturdier and even taller trees than them. And this is where we reach our climax community or climax forest, when we have our most diversity and most stability in the area. Okay, so that concludes our lesson on succession. I hope you found that clear and helpful. Thank you for your time.